Today, I'd like to tell you a story about a creative idea that somebody had over 3,000 years ago and how it inspired millions of artists and traveled all the way around the world. Let's jump right in. I'm talking about a craft technique called decoupage. The word comes from Middle French and it means to cut out or to cut from. When most people think of decoupage, they think of some fancy antique furniture like this or of jewelry boxes from craft shows like this. But the story actually starts almost 3,000 years ago on the other side of the world. In ancient Siberia, nomadic tribes used cutouts made out of felt to decorate the tombs of their leaders. From there, the practice spread to China, where red paper cutouts were used to decorate windows and lanterns. This practice still continues to this day and is called Chuang Hua, which means window flowers or window paper. In the 17th century, traders from Venice, Italy were so impressed by these paper cutouts that they saw in China that they brought them back to the rest of Europe. And from there, they traveled to the courts of the French kings. In the 17th and early 18th century, the French royalty were the cool kids on the block. Everyone else in Europe wanted to copy what they were wearing and how they were decorating their houses. It's around that time that the name decoupage started being used. And in the French court, that usually meant flowery pieces of furniture with cut out floral designs covered in several layers of varnish. For about a hundred years, fancy people in Europe couldn't get enough decoupage. And everybody who was anybody had French looking decoupage pieces in their houses. But like most things that were once popular, decoupage fell out of fashion. And for a couple hundred years, the world moved on and forgot about it. That is, until it came to the USA as part of the arts and crafts movement in the early 20th century. Since then, it's remained a popular art form. You might be wondering, how is decoupage different from collage? I was wondering that too, so I looked it up. Collage and decoupage are both paper crafts involving cutting and gluing. They both take images, photos, and material from one source and turn them into something completely different. However, they are not one and the same. Collage is considered a formal art, while decoupage is considered a craft. I use the words a little bit differently. When I think of collage, I think of an art piece that is put together using a glue stick, or an art piece that's used with just glue underneath the pieces of paper. But with decoupage, it's very important that we don't just glue underneath the paper, we also put a layer of glue over the top because we want it to look very flat and smooth. For today's project, I'm gonna show you how to make a decoupage project using a canvas board and cut out paper. For this activity, all you're going to need is a flat canvas board, a paintbrush, some transparent glue, and lots of paper. Let's jump right in. To start off, I am filling up my little container with some of that transparent glue. I'm starting off with just a little bit. I'll probably need to refill it as I go along, but I think it's better to start with a little rather than have a lot of leftover glue. Okay, so I'm putting a pretty generous dollop of glue underneath my paper, and then I put the paper on top, and you can see that I'm even pouring more on top. I really want a lot of glue on top of the paper in addition to being underneath, and the reason is because I want it to lay completely flat. What you can't see on this video is that every couple minutes I picked it up and kind of angled it to the side just to make sure that I could tell that none of the little papers were sticking up. It's really important for this that it all takes on the shape of whatever it's glued to. So I wanted to see that texture of the canvas board underneath. Putting more clear glue on top there. I found this great magazine clipping and I very carefully cut him out. I did that off camera because I didn't think you needed to see that part. But I also found some textures in magazines. I can't remember what this was a picture of, but not every image that you find in a magazine needs to be recognizable. Sometimes it's enough to just have different shapes, different textures, different shifts of color. Same thing with this, these little pink splotches. I noticed that it was very cool colors in the background and I wanted something kind of warm. So I cut up this rhinestone purse and as you're looking through magazines or newspapers, you might find some things that you wouldn't normally find interesting. But once you start analyzing them for color or texture, suddenly they take on new importance, like that rhinestone purse. So 
but I let it dry for a couple hours and I'm angling it back and forth so you can see the light pass over it, showing you that it's completely flat. I like that I can see the texture of the canvas underneath that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to trick my viewers into thinking that this is a painting and not anything made out of paper. If I just add enough paint over top of this, I can add some other textures and to the casual observer, they might think that I actually painted all these details instead of layering them on with paper. So I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast where the sky meets the ground. I thought that was kind of blending together a little bit. I also want to turn these fairy looking wings into something more like a angel wing. So I'm adding some feather texture with some red and yellow there. Yeah, something like that. Just kind of blurring the edges of that cut paper. Now filling in all the white space so that you can't really see where each piece of paper ends. I want it to look like maybe this is an oil painting. And I'm pretty happy with the way this is coming together. Covering up a lot of those paper edges with brush strokes just kind of makes it look a little bit, I don't know, more sophisticated, more artsy. Yeah, something like that. Just to give myself a fun challenge, you can also see that I started with the three primary colors, so I was forced to mix any sort of in-between shades that I might need. And here's what it looked like at the end. As always, thanks for watching. Just a disclaimer, I am not an art historian. I did some research online to find this information and I'm pretty sure that it is accurate, but if you have revisions or corrections, please let me know in the comments. Thanks and have a creative day.